Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today I'm at the Mary Hill Research Farm with BASF's Rob Miller. Rob, how's it going? Great. How are you doing, Bern? I'm doing good. Hey, it is just past the Labor Day weekend here, and I want to talk about, you know, harvest aids and a little bit of weed control here. But let's start with where we're at in early September. Um, I've never seen a crop, you know, advancing so fast and so uneven. What are you seeing? Exactly that same thing. The last, say, week, 10 days or so, the leaves are really starting to drop on some of these soybean crops. And that's where, when you actually look at and walk through the fields, the pods are still yellow and green in some situations. On some of the knolls, they've kind of drowned it out a little bit. So whether it could be some drought or could be potash sufficiency, could be SDS, that's where you want to go out there and, uh, and assess that. Could be shallow roots as well, some type of compaction. But we're really seeing the variability within some of these fields. And that's just the variability that we've had all season long, variability from planting. And now we're starting to see uh, that start to tail off at the end. So that's where, when it comes to harvest aid treatments, Forget about the leaves. Don't okay. look at the leaves, look at the, look at the pods. And depending on the herbicide that you're using, and you always want to follow those herbicide labels, a product like Aragon LQ would be a 80 to 90% leaf drop. And it's always better to be fashionably late. Spray it on the later side versus too early because we want to avoid those residues in the grain. So that's the number one thing to remember. What do we do with the unevenness in the crop? Do we have to factor that in at all? Or as I say, it's just to look at the most of the, much of the crop and make a decision there? Yeah, look at your overall yield potential. But if you apply it too early, um, like as, especially when there's some green stems or, or the pods still haven't, uh, aren't rattling in mm -hmm. that, or the seeds aren't rattling in that pod, that's where if you play, spray it too early, you can get the residues in the green and that could really limit our export potential. So mm. I know there's gonna be tough to get out there. The, look at the, the majority of the field. Some of these lower knolls, you might have to harvest separately or, or as well, but that's where focus on the entire field, be fast, really late. It's always better to maybe wait in a couple extra two days uh, versus getting on there too mm. early. Now you always say this is not only a time for harvest age, but you know, burn down, fall weed control. So let's talk about that. And first of all, you know, this early you know leaf drop um, and this advancing crop. What does that mean for for weeds this fall? Yeah. So if you actually look at some of these fields where the, there's no more leaves on the on the soybeans, uh, you actually look down there. You can see a lot more light penetration. And once you start seeing the light penetration, that's where you start to see the weeds flush. So uh, the, the leaves, yes, they do provide some coverage, but there's enough soil moisture there in most of parts of the province where we're starting to see those multiple flushes. We're two weeks ahead of schedule. That means the, the winter annuals, the, the chickweeds, the dandelions, the, the annual bluegrass, uh, those are the weeds that are just going to continue to flush and going to be tougher to kill. Yeah. Let's talk about a couple of weeds and how we can tackle them across the farm here. Now you've got all kinds of plots with all kinds of weeds. Um, what about sow thistle? Sow thistle is one weed that we always get lots of, lots of questions about. And the fall is always the best time to control some of these tough to control weeds. Because in the fall, it's taking all the energy and the nutrients from the leaves and transporting it to the roots. Mm -hmm and herbicides are just along for the ride. So you get better penetration down into the roots because it's the movement and movement pathway of, of, all, those little of all those nutrients. Whereas in the springtime, the flow is the opposite direction. So that's where it's going from the roots and up to the up to the vegetative material. So that's where fall is the best time to control any of these winter annuals and also avoid some of these annual weeds from going to seed. Yeah. That is actually setting you up for success as well. What about uh, dandelion and chickweed? Something that we tackle in the spring, but here's an opportunity. Yeah, so every year it almost seems like we're trying to tackle dandelion and chickweed. Chickweed, especially last year, seems to be mother nature's cover crop. Mm. Uh, it just seems to be across every field, especially on some of the heavy clays. And that's where, you know, dandelions, they have that large taproot system. Anyone that's doing some of the, the high-speed disc, the vertical tillage, um, the turbo tills, whatever you want to uh, refer to them as, we see that more of a trend. And now we're seeing some of these shifts towards these winter annuals and perennial weeds because we're actually not just cutting the weeds and, and cutting that taproot. It's just kind of spreading the weed seeds around. So we're starting to see a few more annual weeds and, 
and not getting as good of control of some of those perennial weeds. Not knocking the, the tillage implements, uh, but you just start to see a shift in terms of our management practices. So Rob, as we get into fall, um, is frost a concern? Frost can actually help you in yeah. terms of weed control. So something like uh, a candida thistle, you actually need a first frost to actually trigger it to go into winter survival yeah. mode. And that's where you actually get better activity uh, out of your herbicides if you wait till after that first frost, that first fall frost uh, on something like a can of thistle. Not as much with south thistle. South thistle, we actually found uh, recent work that uh, Mike Cobra has dug up that is actually daylight sensitive. So it'll actually start to go dormant kind of the, you know, the second half of September. And we might actually be spraying some of our herbicides too late if we're trying to manage some of these cover crops. You know, we're trying to get the maximum benefit from the cover crop. We're trying to, might try to take it out end of October the south thistle might actually be, be dormant by that right. stage. So that's where you could have some, you know, you doesn't matter what you do, you might not have as effective uh, means of weed control. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, you always want to avoid spraying the morning after a frost. You always want to wait 24, maybe even 72 hours, depending on when that frost hits, when we consistently get that frost, um, we still get good, good efficacy on weeds. We've actually done a lot of plots in mid-November and still had really good activity on something mm -hmm. like a dandelion. You do want to look at adding in some surfactants, depending on which products you're using, but adding in some extra surfactants. So if you're using a product like uh, like Distinct or even a dicamba based product, we see a benefit to adding in some, some merge or some non-ionic and assist with that. Now, Rob, what about tillage? Uh, you do a lot of trials across the farm here on, you know, how tillage can help manage and work with herbicides, um, manage those weeds. What do you see? Yeah, so some of these high speed discs that don't really actually cut some of these perennial weeds, you know, it just kind of moves the soil around. They're good seed bed preparation tools, but not really effective means of weed control. Uh, really, it's only a mobile plow that will actually come and cut some of those uh, those big tap roots. Mm -hmm. And by no means should we be going back to the plow on a lot of these fields, mm -hmm. just from a from a soil erosion and conservation method. Uh, but that's where it depends on how aggressive that tillage is, uh, the si the stage of the weeds, the size of the weeds. If you have some really large tap roots there, it actually might just split it in two and it'll just continue to keep growing. So if you ever are doing some tillage, especially the later in the fall that we get, and if, especially if you have any of these glyphosate resistant weeds, the can of mm -hmm. flea bane, the water hemp, you wanna prevent them from going to seed, you wanna use that herbicide first prior to doing any type of tillage. Because right. once you do that tillage, it's gonna be tough to get across that field, it's gonna be rough, and then you're, then you're already behind the game the fall, uh, next spring when yeah. it comes to managing these ones. Rob, final question, and that is cover crops. Obviously, they do some great things with cover crops, but they can be challenging if, uh, if we let them overwinter. Um, a lot of people want to knock them out in the fall. What do we need to think about? Yeah, so you still have time for some of these, take it out some of these cover crops, depending on what's planted there. So like, a, say, an oat pea mixture or even oats, radishes like we have here on the farm, you know, it's pretty easy to take it a little bit later in the season. You want to get the maximum benefit. So even, uh, you know, if you're going into early November, it, you know, the, the products still really work depending on where you are in the province. Something like a red clover, um, you wanna make sure that you add in the glyphosate plus the dicamba in there um, and get it before it gets too tall, especially if you're looking at doing some of the, uh, uh, some fall tillage there. So uh, making sure some of these, uh, you have a good cover crop stand. Some of them are a little bit patchier this year's and you're starting to see a lot of those annual weeds that come up, the pigweed, and if you, you know, we have some pigweed here, and if it's something like water hemp, you want to actually make sure you terminate that much earlier. Yeah. And if you have some canned flea bane there, make sure you terminate it much earlier to make sure that they don't go dormant. And same with, uh, with South Thistle. Awesome. Hey, great stuff, Rob. Um, always appreciate you making time for us on the Soybean School of Relax. Thanks for having me.